First of all, I want to say the clip you put up of me when I was eating the Vaseline, you got the most views, and I thought it was hilarious because you were one of the dudes that I was trying to follow, and come to find out, you are one of the best. So, Stefan Xavier Marbury, born February 20th, 1977. It took me a while to build a state of mind to tackle the Stefan Marbury story. One, because growing up and just beginning to develop a love for the game, Marbury, along with Allen Iverson, were my favorite point guards to watch, and I too developed a love for his game just as much as I loved the sport. Other than Iverson's crossover and style, I watched and emulated the way Steph ran, so strong and athletic, how he attacked the defense, so poised but relentless, his shot leaping as high as he could and releasing at his peak with the most textbook form I'd seen to that point. He also had a style and flair straight from the place the world in the 90s were watching and held as the heart and soul of basketball. Everything he did down to the part in the center of his fade, I wished to recreate. Another reason I found it difficult to cover Stefan was because where do you put a player and personality like him? The Lupe Fiasco Kid Cudi of the NBA to me. Immense amount of talent but ideas and expression that the majority may find challenging to be around. He also had all the skills and has all the numbers and most accolades to be recognized as one of the game's greats, resulting in being enshrined in the Basketball Hall of Fame. And that's where we'll focus, on Stefan Marbury's case to be a Hall of Famer. A star in high school and champion, star in college leaving after his freshman year, being drafted into the NBA as a top five pick and having a long all-star career, something that eluded all four of his brothers, three before him, to venturing off into a world and creating an even bigger legacy that's led to a statue built of himself. If you know anything about Asian culture, you know that statues built of you is the highest honor you can receive that will be protected, preserved, and remembered for centuries after you leave this existence. He's played at a high level at every stop in his journey, although he may not have won or carried himself the way many would have liked, and some of those may be the reason he even has to make his own case for Hall of Fame status. Let's talk about three huge reasons his growth was stunted, and why, unlike my other basketball hero growing up, he may never get his day on that stage. It's your boy JC Stunted Growth. Let's get it. Marbury is from Brooklyn, New York, Coney Island to be exact, and knew from age two that he loved that thing he saw his brothers bouncing all day and was attracted to it earlier than most. Something Marbury is underrated for throughout his life, being early. Steph would do things like take the basketball the older guys were playing with and run away as fast as he could to see if any of the guys were fast enough to catch him. Sometimes he'd make it back to his apartment and they'd have to call his mother, let her know that Steph did that thing again and she'd have to convince him to give it back. As he got older, it was clear that basketball was in his genes. Three of his older brothers had played at high levels in the city and all had major chances of going all the way. Eric Marbury was even drafted by the San Diego Clippers and later cut before he could suit up. Similar fate occurred to two more of his older brothers that also became casualties of the basketball journey. But that wouldn't be the same for Steph. Four times a charm, I guess. By his senior year in high school, Stefan was rated the best player in the nation at some points and even finished as the number two rated prospect behind future teammate Kevin Garnett. He was a McDonald's All-American, Mr. Basketball in New York, averaged 27 points, 8 assists, and 3 steals, and took his powerhouse school, Lincoln, to a New York Public League championship. He was courted by every big name school in the country, but eventually decided that Georgia Tech, who had flown him out in a private jet on his visit, was the place for him. 
My mother and father are putting me into your hands, and they want you to protect me and cherish the beautiful moments that we spend together at Georgia Tech. Stunt number one, bigger market, only player combo. In his lone season in college, Marbury was sensational. He averaged 19 points, almost five assists, shot 37% from three, and made it to the regional semifinals of the NCAA tournament. He declared for the draft, stating that he was ready for the NBA and that staying any longer would hurt him more than help. He was taken fourth overall by the Milwaukee Bucks and traded that night for Ray Allen, who was taken fifth to Minnesota. I can't even explain the way I feel right now. It's been 20 years. 20 long years. It's here now. He'd immediately join a second year and one of the league's brightest young stars, but yet to find his footing, Kevin Garnett. He was hampered by ankle injuries early on that saw Allen Iverson steal the shine and end up winning Rookie of the Year, but still had a solid season, averaging 16 points and 8 assists, good for third on the team. The following season, Garnett finally put it all together, and Tom Gugliotta, 28, was in the prime of his career. Marbury averaged almost 18 that year, adding 8.6 assists as well. He helped improve the team from 26 wins the year before he joined to 40 to 45 in year two and the playoffs. They were one of the more exciting young teams in the league with a budding star in Steph and a full-fledged superstar in KG who had just secured a huge contract. It was at this time Steph decided he wanted the same contract love and bigger endorsements himself. And being in a small market with a team that already had their superstar, he didn't see how he could attain those goals. In those times, the thinking and also the money were different. Teams didn't usually have multiple superstars and high money guys like you see today. One team most times had one superstar that was making the bulk of the player's salary. I can understand why he thought that way at the time, but it may have led to his first growth stunt, leaving a promising team so soon when they could have built something really special in Minnesota. It also led to him not producing enough in the wins column and being traded again shortly after arriving in his new, bigger market, New Jersey, where he was finally the only star. This lost chance of winning may have also cost him his Hall of Fame consideration. Stunt number two, winning where it mattered. I think it's safe to assume that not winning in the NBA did cost him Hall of Fame status and not necessarily winning a championship, but showing with you as the best or one of the team's best players could win at a high level and consistently. Yes, he won three CBA championships, but up until now, unfortunately, those don't amount to what winning in the NBA could add. After being traded to the Nets, the team missed the playoffs in his first 31 games, then the next two full seasons as he manned the ship. He was then traded for Jason Kidd in 2001, and to make matters worse, Jason Kidd and the Nets immediately began to win, going to the NBA Finals in Kidd's first year, virtually with the same roster. Marbury says the reasons for this was because when he was there, most of his guys were injured and when Kidd came, they were healthy again, causing them to win. He was traded to Phoenix and again the team failed to have success winning. Yes, Steph was getting his numbers and was even an all-star prior and with the Suns, but it didn't lead to wins, which was now his third stop in the league where his team seemed better without him. He was moved again after just two full seasons to the New York Knicks where he failed to even take them to the playoffs in four and a half seasons. He also played for the 2004 Olympic team where the team famously became the first USA Olympic team not to win a gold medal since adding NBA players and a lot of it had to do with lack of leadership, selfishness, and a style that didn't adjust to international play, much to the blame of Marbury and Allen Iverson. 
In no way am I saying I know these things for a fact and that Stefan doesn't possess real reasons straight from the horse's mouth. But in my opinion, if I were judging objectively if a player should make the Hall of Fame or not, winning as a factor on a team would be huge. In Steph's NBA career, he didn't do that. In fact, in the 846 games he played in the league, he has a losing record of 376 and 470. He would finish his NBA career with the Boston Celtics after being bought out by the Knicks, but was a shell of his former self by then, only playing in 23 games in a backup role behind Rajon Rondo. The Celtics offered him a minimum contract for a second season, but he declined and headed to China. I knew that this was something that would be able to put me back into the realm of being relevant as a basketball player. To be able to be greeted the way how I was greeted, just amazing. Stunt number three, bad attitude is never awarded. I think that the relationship is severed and this is the time for us to all be men and go forward. I don't trust his word. Now this one may be all speculation, but I think another stunt in his growth and possible reason he hasn't or may not get into the Hall of Fame is because of what some would call a bad attitude he had along with personality that just doesn't align with the boys club. I don't think anything was wrong with his attitude or personality, but as humans with emotions that are making these decisions, to them, they disagree. Marbury infamously clashed and called out his coaches in the media and direction of the team while playing for his hometown Knicks, beginning with Larry Brown. Unlike Allen Iverson, Brown wasn't able to get through to Marbury for many reasons. Marbury credits Brown as a huge reason the 2004 Olympic team didn't win and also made it known to Isaiah Thomas that he didn't want Coach Brown to join the Knicks the year after. Team president Isaiah Thomas convinced him he'd be good for Steph, but he wasn't. Marbury thought Brown was borderline racist and was trying to sabotage his career because he couldn't control him like he wanted and also stemming from the few they had on the Olympic team. Coach Brown was fired after 0506. Isaiah Thomas would step in as coach and two feud with Marbury, who questioned Thomas's decision to remove him from the starting lineup, so Marbury left the team unexcused. The story got even more strange when Thomas and Steph had a physical altercation on the team's plane, with Steph threatening to out Thomas for the highly publicized intern relationship the two of them were keeping secret. Steph missed a game and returned, but the Knicks were all but done and everyone knew it. Late in 2008, Thomas was removed as president and coach and replaced by Mike D'Antoni. Wanna guess how that relationship went? Well, Marbury was outplayed by Chris Duhon, according to Mike D'Antoni in training camp, and D'Antoni offered Steph a chance to come off the bench, to which Marbury declined and was banned from attending any team practices or games, leading to his buyout. They talk about what Kyrie has been doing more recently, but it was nothing compared to the drama that went on in Marbury's time in New York, and that cost him favor in the media and amongst Hall of Fame decision makers. He didn't want to play the game for the powers that be, and it came off as a bad attitude, and he'll probably never be awarded for it, along with the aforementioned reasons. All in all, Stefan Marbury is still a legend in my book. He became a star in China, winning three championships and finals MVP, and bridging the gap for players to follow his lead. He's a legend in China, all after the NBA turned into a disaster. At that point, he could have laid down and just gave up, but took the challenge and it couldn't have went better there. Sadly, the things he had done in America outweighs all of that and most likely cost him his enshrinement. Salute to Stefan Marbury. In my opinion, he should still be at least considered for the Hall of Fame, but I just don't know if after the things he's done in the NBA, he'll ever get in. Much respect. I wish him nothing but the best. It's your boy JC Stunner Growth, and I'm out.
Also, visit StunnerGrow3.com right now. We have some new winter merch for all your fashion needs. We have the Legends Edition package, the Championship Edition, and much more to satisfy your winter fashion. Once again, visit StunnerGrow3.com right now. Please like and subscribe to this video for more content. It's your boy JC Stunner Growth, man. Let's get it. Thank you.